Hey all, I'm going to be showing how to get a Bowden style extruder set up without having to change your firmware. There's a few reasons why you may want to do this. First off, you're getting that weight off the print nozzle. Now what that means is there's less tension on the belt. It's going to be able to do more accurate prints because you're not throwing that weight around. And sometimes when you're doing like high detail prints or it's trying to fill in or print like a corner or sharp edge or something that's just a finer detail, the head has to whip back and forth uh, fairly quick, even at the slower speeds. It's a little bit easier on it if you don't have that weight of the actual extruder motor and the extruder frame on there. Also, it will be easier on the bearings on the back. You're now putting that additional weight on the axis there. And normally with the direct feed setup, the filament would be loose, just running directly from the spool down to the print head problem with that is is when it goes left or well left in the case of this particular printer when it goes left it's pulling on it so there's more tension on the filament now when it goes right then there's slack and you can see that in a uh, print quality like if you ever do the test cubes you'll notice that when it goes left versus when it goes right the test cubes can come out a little wonky it's not a big difference but there is a difference now when you have a setup like this You'll see here in the video, no matter where it is, there's always the same amount of filament between the extruder and the actual nozzle. So you no longer get that slack or that tension. So when you do print, you'll get a lot cleaner result. And this setup is fairly simple. It's gonna require you to uh, print off a couple parts or possibly one part, depending on how you do it. What you're going to need is a little nozzle adapter here on Thingiverse. Now I'm gonna supply a link down in the description where you can get this. There's a few different versions. But this one is my favorite, it seems to work out the best. And you're literally just gonna simply unbolt the extruder in the frame, and this simply bolts into its place. Here you can see that the bolts just simply go right through, tighten down the nuts, and that part's pretty much done. Now you will have to put on a feed tube fitting, of course. You can get that here on Amazon, they're fairly cheap. You can get the tube and the fittings fairly cheap. Now this particular end, this adapter that you're gonna have to print off, this particular one, this one requires a wider fitting base than what a normal one is. I think there are some out there that use the normal fittings, but this particular one will have to use a uh, wider fitting because of the size of the hole. Still fairly cheap though. You're also going to need an uh, extruder frame. I know you can print off some, some people make their own. I wanted to go with this one because the stock extruder frame is plastic on the original. I didn't like that and have a bad history of uh, stretching and not giving out an even flow. So I went with this one on Amazon. Another part that's fairly cheap, comes with the frame and the motor mount. If you mount it where I'm putting mine, next thing you're gonna have to print off are these spool holders. These are ones that I actually designed. I have the file up on Thingiverse, I'll provide a link. This just gets it up higher off the frame. Now for this particular style, uh, you can see here that I have a steel chassis. It's a Prusa rip wrap. Hick top style chassis. It's a pretty common one. You don't have to go with this particular spot to place the extruder motor. This is just where I suck this one because it was easiest at the time. I'll probably be moving it later. It's been working out fairly well. So after you mount the nozzle setup and you place your motor up at the top, obviously you have to reroute the wires. You just uh, simply attach the, the filament tube. As you can see here, it still feeds through fairly well. And you just simply push it through and until you see it coming out of the nozzle like you would normally, and that's it. Another nice thing about this is when you uh, either put in or remove the filament, you're no longer having to push down on the frame to the rail. I never liked doing that. I was always careful with it, but I don't like the idea of you having to push down the fairly stiff spring to something that's attached to your axis. You don't have to worry about messing up the alignment or damaging anything like that. It's fairly rigid up there. With the way that the nozzle adapter is designed, they did a pretty good job at it. The, the hole that feeds through the adapter actually lines up with the nozzle throat fairly well. I haven't had any issues at all pushing the filament down there with it going through. I've changed filament multiple times with this setup and I have yet to have any issues. The cooling fan does a pretty good job at uh, cooling down the mounting block before it gets to the plastic of the adapter. I printed mine off with Hatchbox PETG just because of how well it handles the heat. It probably would work with PLA because like I said, that block actually stays fairly cool even with it being that close to the nozzle. But I would stick with either a PET style plastic or an ABS. Plus another nice thing about this is you get a clearer shot of what's going on with the extruder. There's a jam, if anything's kinked up, you get a clearer shot of it. But yep, simply uh, print off the parts, bolt them in place, feed the filament through and you're set. You're no longer throwing that weight around it's also easier on the extruder once you're not pulling on the filament left and right that's less stress on it like i said it's always the equal pressure on that filament 
fairly easy update longest part is printing off the pieces that's it takes only a few minutes to set it up and your printer will thank you anyway guys thanks for watching have fun printing